Hey, what's up everyone? Mecha here, back with another brand new Let's Play. We're gonna be playing some Fire Emblem 6, The Binding Blade, a game that was only released in Japan, but has an excellent translation patch for us to play through this game. And once again, I'm gonna be joined by my man, Raisins. How are you doing? Doing well, Mecha. Hello. Hello. We are playing some Fire Emblem 6. I'm so excited. The Binding Blade. It has a title in Japanese that I won't try to pronounce because last time I did, Dundong got really cross at me. <laughs> but... How dare you? How dare you mess up your pronunciation? He said, and I quote, you butchered it so bad that it's basically unsalvageable. I'm like, damn, I feel bad. <laughs> Never learning Japanese. Destroyed, destroyed. And yeah, no. as you might have seen by some of the visuals on the screen or the thumbnail or anything else, there is a bit of a twist. Uh, we're not just going through hard mode the normal way. Uh, we're not just getting a good ending, but we also have a time traveler in our midst. We're going to be joined by the one and only Lin from Fire Emblem 7 because for the longest time I wondered to myself, you know, how good is Lin or would have Lin have been if she wasn't FE6? Because, well, it's complicated. We'll get into it. Basically, it was an experiment. And I want to give a shout out to a couple people who helped me out with this. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Jotari for sparking this idea. He is a person who makes ROM hacks on, I think, FE Universe. And he made a version of this that replaces Roy with Lin. And he kind of triggered this idea in me that I had for a long time. I was like, wait, I should actually do this for my Let's Play. Because I was walking around with that idea, like, should I make it into like a, a single video or like a scripted video or like a what if video? Like, how do I get footage for that? And I realized, oh, I could just ask someone to make that ROM hack for me. And that was done by a person named Amberstorm, who you might know as the creator or one of the creators of uh, a patch for this game called. Uh, Project Ember, which is also a very good version, but we're gonna play mostly vanilla, except we're replacing one of the characters with uh, Lin. Let's see how good she is, and we'll get into why exactly as we're playing. But that's the plan, that's a twist. I like to play games with a little bit of a twist. So if you're having a good time already, or if you're planning to have a good time in the future, subscribe, like, all that stuff, and have some fun. Let's go. That's right. Mm. And is there some good stuff? I remember uh, briefly chatting with Jatari about making it as well, and like, getting the details down for oh, you know example oh, like, hold up i didn't notice this is new oh yeah i'm well i met him on saturday we we're actually talking about it um like i think he and i were discussing the patch four or five days before yeah. uh you came to me with the idea oh okay because we were trying to figure out like oh would she would she be the lord uh, would she have the rapier would she have the manicotti and i think in his version lynn not only replaces roy uh but she still has the rapier and the binding blade instead of the manicotti and the soul cutty oh i see that makes sense that's different. So, it is different. We are Lin, Lin is replacing another favorite unit, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it had to be that way. It had to be that way. It had to be. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and see. Yeah, I will say Oops. I am I am skipping the story for this because I've seen it a lot of times, and I expect FE6 chapters are they take quite long, and I don't want to uh, make the episodes too long, so I'm gonna be skipping the story story for the most part. Um, there's no like. Super amazing cutscenes in this game, unfortunately, because it's from the GBA era. Uh, but it's still a pretty good game, and I would recommend it to anyone to play it for themselves. I personally, I can't really watch a Let's Play for the story. Like, I'd rather just read it at my own pace, and I don't know how about you, but that's kind of how, not how I roll personally. So I like to make the content that I would enjoy watching. So okay. uh, that's how we're gonna roll here. Uh, but yeah, there she is, Lynn. We'll get into her in a moment. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna play for a little bit first, I guess. If that makes sense. Uh, we're playing hard mode, oh, yeah. which is not available on your initial playthrough. Uh, it forces you to play normal mode first, and once you've beaten it, you can start a new game on hard mode. And hard mode in this game is pretty brutal, so I would not recommend anyone for the first time playing hard mode. I would just recommend playing normal mode. But I think hard mode in this game is a, well, a pretty good challenge. One of the better, harder difficulties in Fire Emblem, especially compared to, you know, something like Lunatic Plus in later games or Manning. I think this is a pretty well balanced difficulty overall. Yeah, this is definitely one of the better hard modes I've played. And I will say, too, um, if you've never played FE6, I definitely second Mecha's advice to play normal mode first. Normal mode is still really good. In fact, it's my favorite way to play Fire Emblem 6. I do love hard mode as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't don't feel like you're getting a cheaper experience because you have to play normal mode first on your ROM. Like, you're not. Normal mode FE6 is still really cool. Yeah. Uh, if you do think you're a badass and you can play it on hard mode first, then, you know, like, go download someone's save. But... Yeah. I mean, those people exist. I've seen someone beat like FE12 on one of the hardest difficulties ever uh, on their first playthrough. They've just never played it before. Um, yeah. Wait, I, I have I have a couple friends who have played and beaten FE6 on hard mode, and that was their first Fire Emblem game ever. Mm. Um, I mean, some people just good also... at strategy games, I guess. Some people just gamers. 
Oh, yeah, no, they're just that good at video games, I know. <laughs> anyway, um, we need to fight a couple dudes, and normally in Fire Emblem, in the, like, the introductory chapters, it's like, okay, you can just beat a couple easy dudes, it's like, you just use whatever you want, and you'll probably come out on top, but uh, not here. I think you get, like, two-shot with most of your characters here, so you don't want to just yeah, go hey. all out here. Um, so you don't want to do that. You want to use Marcus, but Marcus is like the, I think one of the fan base's favorite Jagan's favorite pre-promotes in this uh, like series because he just doesn't kill the enemies. He just weakens them for everyone else to kill. So yeah, we can see why. Here, yeah, the key thing here is to put Marcus in a place where he can attack all three of these fighters. I vaguely remember that if you put him like here or here, he doesn't get to hit all three of them. But maybe if you put him like one of these places, then he will probably fight all three. Let's try that out. I can't quite remember what is the issue with. Um... It's because attacking the... the fighter first, uh, and then letting him move to attack you, say, in the north, onto Roy. Oh, that works too. I'll try that, because that way we can guarantee that there's only space for him. Hopefully he doesn't crit here and steal our XP. Oh no, not with that 5% crit. <laughs> it does happen. It, like, it, it's bound to happen at least once in the chapter, but we'll just accept it when it happens. Okay. For sure. Marcus, one of the classic Jagans, Iron Sword, Silver Lance. Mm -hmm. We should show off the stats. Yeah, super, super, super useful early on, and later on, honestly, still pretty useful character like his growth rates are garbo but he even in normal in, in normal mode he holds up pretty well even in the long term in hard mode not so much but there's still like reasons to deploy him later on if you wanted to but early chapters i would never recommend playing the early chapters without marcus he's so so good um so, Ew, yeah he's vital so i put roy like in range of these dudes roy's like i think he gets two shot by these guys like barely survives a hit but he does come out on top against the two hp fighter i guess Stats aren't like super impressive or anything, but they sort of work for this point in the game. I've never been too impressed with Roy as a lord. I think he's known as like one of the worst ones in the history. I don't think that's completely earned. There are some things that he can do, um, but I'm not gonna lie, he is not the easiest one to use. He does not stand out in a whole lot of ways. The big thing that holds him back is promoting so late, only having swords as an option to attack with, which in this game is generally fine, but combined with these stats, it just doesn't really work very well. Strength and speed just don't excel very much. And I think he's like a poster boy, poster child of FE6's problem of just not having super high growth rates compared to later games like Awakening and Fates and uh, Three Houses. It just comes out looking mediocre, but he is serviceable and I think we'll be training him along the way just to make sure that he can survive because uh, he's got a... I think there's some parts in the game where it's just super nice to have a Roy with actual stats that doesn't get obliterated by everything in this way. Um, I don't know what you think about that, but that's kind of my take on Roy in short. On, on Roy, I think Roy is one of the strongest lords pre-Awakening. Oh, whoa, um, hold up, hold up. Hot takes, hot takes coming in. No, I'm serious. Uh, for a lot of reasons. For one, being sword locked is actually pretty fine in this game. Uh, the 1 2 range is good, but it's not as excellent as it was in, say, like FE7 or FE8. And that does also mean he gets access to a lot of great tools, such as Armor Slayer, Worm Slayer, Light Brand, uh, even the Lance River, too. And he doesn't need to always hold on to these items, he can just trade them away from other people around him. One of the big X factors in Roy's favor is the fire affinity for the support. The fact that he can provide this to, to some of the strongest units in the game, Marcus, Lance, Allen, means that he ends up providing a ton of utility just to a lot of the strongest characters in your army all the time. Even Shanna, I think he has a support with. That's true. And we can maybe later on get to uh, how much we want to use supports in this playthrough. I personally use them a lot when I play, uh, but I mostly play like casual and speed run. I'm not done mm -hmm. LTC. That's where you fair. can't really afford to build supports. No, that's fair. Well, I think supports are like, that. they take a while to build up, of course, but when you do have them, they are a savior. I actually, like, I did use supports a lot with Roy on my first hard mode playthroughs. It was actually like a really, really big point in his favor. That's true. Um, it's just a matter of do you want to spend the time building them? Which, I mean, there's no real penalty for doing so. It's just, it's just kind of boring sometimes, but it really helps if you're struggling. Um, it costs, yeah, it costs turns and you can get them out, but it, the biggest cost is, of course, turns. Mm -hmm. And so this guy's gonna hit Marcus. So we'll move everyone else out of range, the Christmas cats and boys. We can discuss them next turn when they've actually done something. Um, we we're actually messing around with this earlier, and Lynn had like the speed to double because she had her Hector mode bases from FE7, but it turns out without those, she's actually not as capable of surviving hits or doubling. So we have to hold her back into like for later. Just kind of no, move she doesn't her. get one shot by that guy. That's actually shocking. Yeah, I know, right? She's. Uh... I mean, these are her limbo stats by default. They're not fantastic or anything. Uh, I think with one or two points of speed, she will double every fighter. One point will double some fighters, and then she'll be like rolling off. I think Lin will be really interesting to play with in this game because I think the reason Lin is like considered worse in FE7 as like one of the worst units 
uh, is because, not necessarily because her stats are terrible all around, or because a unit like her could never work, but because the context of heavy 7 is just works against Lin. And I think that's kind of similar to how you said Roy being sword locked in heavy 6 doesn't hurt him as much as some of the later lords. I don't agree with he's like one of the strongest lords, but I do think that this game works better for Roy than if he said works for Eliwood, because being sword locked in this game is not as bad. Uh, because weapon we hit matters a lot more. Um, speed thresholds are harder to hit, so it's easier for Lin to start double attacking compared to other characters. Um, she doesn't have a crit bonus or anything like Rutger does. That's like the other reason Stormmaster is so good. But being able to hit um, accurately against enemies with more avoid is going to be very nice. And of course, the Mani Kadi in this game. In FE7, it's only double effectiveness, but in this game, it's triple effectiveness. FE7 Japanese, it's double effectiveness, uh, but in this game, it's going to be triple. Or in Japanese version of FE7, it's triple, and it's going to be in this game as well, which will be super nice for her when we get to Cavaliers. Of course, she won't be effective against Nomads and Valkyries uh, because of the, the rapier is the same issue in this game. I think it's kind of a bug, but I didn't want to fix it because I didn't want to make this game too different from vanilla. Uh, but I think Lin is going to be fantastic in situations. There will be situations where she's kind of bad, I think, but she won't be as like annoying to use as she is sometimes in FE7. There it goes. Yeah, for okay. sure. The fact that we have a whole, what is that, 24 might Goodbye. <laughs> against some of these units is it, it, it's actually outrageous mm -hmm. how much might this Manicotti is going to have. Yeah. We might be able to one-shot the boss the next chapter. Oh, hmm. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> oh, see okay, you. I guess that's our, that's our one kill that gets stolen. Like, I guess, how do we get... We go. can one more fighter. We can get that with, like, Lin or Roy. Maybe this is what they meant when they said Marcus can't attack all three of them. <laughs> it's a great crit one of them. <laughs> one of them gets stolen. Now, I've definitely run into situations where uh, they attack in such a way that one of them can't reach him. That's been my issue. Okay, it's a little awkward. Uh, we could do the same thing with this fighter, I guess, make him suicide. Because um, mm -hmm. I think the Cavaliers... Uh, I said they can two shot, but they can two shot by two fighters, but they won't get two shot by the archers. So Did they get uh, two shot by archer plus fighter. Yeah, they don't. They don't. That's what I meant. Um, so we can this guy and then kill this guy with like a Christmas calf or Roy. I actually don't think Roy can survive archer plus fighter. Let's see, twelve. I think the archer does six to him easily. Yeah, we can't use Roy here, but we can use a Christmas calf. They are like pretty good actually. Uh, let me. Which one do you like more, Alan or Lance? Lance and Alan, whichever one gets the better level ups. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's, true. That's, that's how I plan on treating them as well. Just use one of them and hopefully one of them will snowball out of control. I think these units are good situationally. I used to think they were broken good, and now I just think they're good generally because of a lack of better units for the most part. Um, but they can grow really well. The main issue with using both, I find, is that there's only one Night Crest available quickly, and the other one has to wait a pretty long time to promote. And whichever one promotes kind of it's pretty good, but the other one just kind of falls behind and just doesn't end up as well. Uh, but their stats overall are decent. Uh, not so great that they like double everything or two shot everything. Uh, Alan will generally two shot but not double. Lance will generally start doubling at some point, uh, but not two shot things. Uh, depends on the mode too. Like if you're playing normal mode, then Alan will two shot almost everything and Lance will double almost everything from the start. Uh, hard point, they're a little bit further behind the curve. Uh, but once they get going, they're pretty decent, and I like them a lot. And the supports that you mentioned also help them a lot. They get a lot of, like, avoid and hit and attack and everything from them. That's been my experience with them. Yeah, for sure. And Alan's affinity is definitely better suited to that. I think Lance's is more defensive. The fire, the fire affinity is actually just outrageous. It's, what, full, full offensive stuff. So, plus attack, plus hit, plus crit, and then also plus avoid, because why not? Um, I think... Well, what I, what I usually do... We'll see if this ends up being what we do here. What I usually do is, again, just use both, see which one ends up better. That's the one who gets the early Night Crest. And the one who doesn't get the early Night Crest just, you know, gets the bench for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. So, which is a tool you can always use. And I do frequently use it in Fire Emblem 6. <laughs> I agree with that. I think it's still wise to build up, like, a bit of support, at least for the early game. If we can get it, great. If not, whatever. Um, we do want to move Roy out of range, keep Lin away. She's not done anything. Hopefully she'll be getting some action soon. But right now it's a bit too dangerous for her to do anything. Uh, I actually tested the like the Nintendo PC quite a bit, and I was like really impressed with Lin until I figured, oh wait, she has the other bases, the <laughs> the Hector mode base instead of the Lin mode bases. So now she can't yeah, double. Extra two defense, extra two defense, and extra I think it was three speed, something like it. It was really helping her out. Okay, you know, so far pretty happy with how it goes. Marcus is weakening everything, making sure we can kill him. It's not the usual way I go about it, being like this this aggressive about it, but it, it's working, so can't complain. He 
You took the forest, that's annoying. That just makes it easier to surround them. Ooh, to surround the archer strat. I mean, we can kind of kill him, probably. Let's see. Uh, we kind of want the forest to... It was like, I would like to weaken the archer and just get rid of him. Because if we surround him, we have to be in range of like, both of these guys, unless we kill them both. Ah, oh, that's true. I guess we just leave the archer alive, the classic strat. But then Let you him have to surround him, right? Ah, we can do that later. Uh, but then what is he, like... Hmm, we can't really weaken this mm. brigand with Marcus like that, because then we have to expose to units to the brigand and stuff. I think killing the archer is probably the play. Jumping out of the archer with one of these people? Ooh, that's true. Like, because if we kill the archer, then we can put a camp on a forest. I guess. Or we can, like, heal Lance with a Vulnery while Alan kills the uh, archer. But then Alan has to face two axe guys. Which is kind of a problem. Uh, we can always rescue out if we need to. Oh, yeah, I guess. Although, I guess there will be the issue. Well, we might have to count some squares with this axe fighter. This is kind of, like, very characteristic of Fire Emblem 6 early yeah. game, by the way, for those watching. It's like, the enemy stats are quite a bit bloated, so you're on the struggle bus for the first few maps. Yeah. It's all about, like, making sure that Marcus does as much as he possibly can. Uh, what we can do is, like, put somebody at the edge of the range of the fighter. Uh, like, then sneak, like, let Marcus hit this dude. Uh, let this fighter sneak past. And then, uh, hopefully we kill the archer with, uh, full health Alan. Maybe the play yeah, is just, like, let this guy come closer and just feed the one fighter to Marcus. If we have to. Oh, okay, that's, that's or, problem, or solved. <laughs> problem solved. Problem <laughs> solved. Okay. The liberation yeah, unneeded. Good. The Marcus tax. Alright. Well, you didn't give me a choice there. Alright, let's... Uh, dude, this guy's 18 attack. Lin survives because of weapon triangle, only weapon triangle. <laughs> Shall uh, we? I'm gonna I'm gonna give her the brigand so that she can stay at full HP. Because like, if Lin gets damaged, she needs like, two falls to get back up to full health. <laughs> so I'm gonna use, uh, yeah. use Alan here again. Just let him try to snowball him. And like that's he, gonna be her combat for the map. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is more dudes around here. Let's have some faith here, all right? Um, go here, bone up, so they can take another two hits, hopefully. Sure. I think the brigand moves after the fighter, so I think you're right. But it's fine because like the brigand can only reach uh, Marcus anyway, so no matter what, we should be okay here. Okay, let's see how it goes. Yeah, so he goes for Alan. There we go. Gets destroyed. Perfect distance. Get a nice thirty. But yeah, you can see like Alan, the only combat he got was like getting three kills because we couldn't afford him to do anything else besides just feeding kills into him. Okay, so we get that guy out of the way. Okay. And I'm actually not sure if that's in range of Lin. Can you reach? Yeah, you can reach. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll just get the next two guys. Or at least one guy, I guess. We're not in a hurry here. Well, we could speed up a bit by getting two at once. Marcus is that buff, so might as well get away with it. Alright, finally, finally, we get some Moment Lin animations. Truth. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Alright, time to hit. Watch Mr. 95. Yeah. <laughs> I Epic. love it. Uh, she's gonna need a lot of kills XP. to get the, get the speed threshold, though. Yeah, she needs... So at this point, we're earning 30, 30 XP for a kill and 10 XP for a hit. Yes. So it's gonna take a minute to get there. Yeah. Um... Assuming she levels speed up um, twice, we'll just have Walt get the village. We don't haven't really used him very much because I mean, look at the stats. That's why we use them. <laughs> we don't use him yeah, very no. much. I actually I think find he's him carrying like, a bomb, but uh, he is actually he is. I think he's actually like useful in the early on because you do want to chip people often. But when you have Marcus weaken everyone for you, it's not really relevant right now. But later chapters where you don't have Marcus able to do everything. Sometimes you need to gang up on enemies to slowly chip them down and get the kill with one person. But you need, like four people to take one person down, and then one of those four people can often be Walt in hard mode. Uh, but right now, like, let I me mean, just look at the stats. They're just not very good. He's not doing a whole lot of damage. But I will say in this game, bows are pretty good to have around. And it's one of the reasons why I also think Lin might be good. As she promotes and gets bows, uh, she will be able to shoot people from a distance and avoid all the strong counterattacks from the enemies. And Walt is useful. For similar reasons, uh, but there are better bow users in this game that we'll get later on that will make uh, much better utility, much better use of those better bows. Yeah, for sure. I've I've used Walt a few times. I was like currently going through a low tier run, and even in that, like Walt got benched. <laughs> <laughs> like even as I was using only like the worst half of the units of the game, I'm, I'm running around the whole like Trek Noah. <laughs> I deployed Barth on a couple maps, and Walt, Walt's getting benched in that one. 
He's he's pretty rubbish after a while. He's better than nothing, but really only by a bit. I gotta say. That's true. I I do remember against like enemies in chapter four or so, he was doing literally one damage at bad hit rates too. Yeah, I, and 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 he was missing exactly, and yeah. that was with the Roy A support too. I'm oh like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the other thing. If Wolf had like the fire affinity, he'd be so much better, right? Because. Then at least you want to support him with the other, with the calves and with Roy because he has supports with all those pretty fast ones too. But he has ice, which has no uh, offensive bonus. There's no uh, crit and no attack, right? Like fire does. So it's kind of unfortunate. But you can have this ice one. Ice is one of the full defensive ones. Let's go. Another kill for Lin. Easy. I want to get to speed. I want to. I want to give myself reasons to use her. One more kill. One more chip. Weapon. She might get the speed. speed. Yeah. I will get one to Roy. How many did you get already? Just one. Okay. We'll just. It's like. So, I haven't mentioned it yet, but Lin replaces Bors, <laughs> who is not here, and also not a very good unit, so I figured people wouldn't really miss him. That does potentially lock us out of the triangle attack of Armor Knights, I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. Um, or does it? Or does it, yeah, I'm actually not sure. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta try the, I will the try it. Barth Lin <laughs> triangle attack. I will try it. Um, Later on. See what we can do. So I will say, now that we have maybe a couple empty turns, uh, this chapter is actually a throwback to one of the older chapters of Fire Emblem. Can you tell which one? Uh, actually, I actually was going to bring that up too. Isn't it the first uh, chapter of FE1? But the That's right. Side, with like the sort of feeling and everything. One. I mean, this whole game is like a throwback to FE1 in a way. Very much so. I think this was the first game they made with their new lead designer or lead director. Mm. And it was also on a new engine. So I think a lot of their design philosophy was to just make something very simple, very traditional. Uh, they had other problems to deal with, like porting the series to handheld, which was an amazing move for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't the think fact that they were. Yeah, I don't think the map is quite the same. Flipped on the side, there are some differences, but you can definitely tell the influence. Right, there's like a destroyed village, village with gold at the start. Okay. I think it's even the same gold amounts that you get here is like five thousand gold. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no uh, shop that sells armor that sells uh, javelins, though. Kind of cringe. That's true. I wonder if the villagers say the same things too. Uh, at least his money's important. Well, the thing is, and like, you... and if you won, like, you have to visit all the villages with Marth. Uh, like the guy from Smash Bros, right? Like the other guy from Smash Bros. The other guy. <laughs> so you don't really. So the, the guys are like, oh, thanks, uh, Lord Marth, for coming to visit our village. We'll close the gates and stuff. Uh, but here it can be anyone, so the dialogue is less uh, aimed at Marth. This is the village just becomes always. No, Marcus was like the third one he gets? <laughs> Cringe. Pretty sad. Big in moment. He does have the high skill though. What's his skill? 12 or 14? Uh it's like 12, I think, yeah. 14? Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, just come here and fight. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. I'm actually sort of afraid of you because I'm low in health, but it should be fine. Okay. Come here. Just come fight here. I don't I'm not in a hurry. Let's go. Just take it take it easy. Roll them up, another hit for Lin. <laughs> what, like another crit for Marcus? Let's see, okay, I jinxed mind. it, I jinxed it. The reverse jinx. The reverse psychology? Mm hmm. It worked. For me personally, like Marcus, I've seen Marcus crit the boss so many times. <laughs> like so many times. Alright, fuck it. I'm just gonna go in with Marcus. Don't crit. Speed run. Speed. But not too speed, oh, please. Terrible. Setting up all the kills. By the way, he does not do this on normal mode. <laughs> yeah, normal he just kills everything here. Which is good in its own way, but I mean, if you don't want him to kill things on normal, you just rescue. Yeah, just rescue someone. Rescue Boris. Well, rescue Lin, I guess. Rescue who? But... Oh, no speed! <laughs> Rip! Told you. <laughs> speed res. Okay, I guess we found the Still answer. Alright, we're benching Lin. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get her off of the thumbnail. We did a new one. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to ask Rin, my designer, to be like, okay, you actually made a really good overlay and thumbnail and everything, but I'm sorry, it's gonna have to, uh, I have to scrap but, uh, it. I have to, I have to scrap it. I'm afraid. But Lin, Lin did level speed. We bet on the wrong horse here, yeah. right? Like, All right. Actually, can you put um, Marth in this game, Ember, please? <laughs> okay, this is always kind of awkward. Uh, no one can really want to want the boss. I'm pretty sure he one shots Lin. He might even one shot Roy. He does. Uh, he's a steel axe and everything. Kind of cringe. You have the many Kadi, but yeah, this is not something we're gonna risk. So I guess we just park Marcus here and see how when he gets hit, and kind of work it out that way. Probably. 
I mean, every turn he doesn't, we don't kill him, we get support, so fine with it. You bumbling idiots. Dude, don't. Oh, he's calling his um, subordinates bumbling idiots. Yeah, I was like, wait, are you insulting Marcus? Is that a good idea? But never mind. Can't take down some knights. Okay, so if I attack him now, I do 12. He heals a little bit. Uh, I think enough. Because like, he heals more than one, so there's no way that he will be coming out of his turn uh, dead, unless I crit. I'm pretty sure. So I think attack him wow. here and just hoping I don't get hit is to play. If I get hit, just rescue. Right? That seems correct. Oh, we've seen it before. And at the end of the day, yeah, if you get hit, you just rescue. Yeah. We should be out of here. And that'll be at like one HP. <laughs> <Ripped>. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Good <About> job. <laughs> Okay, I think there's a. Ch I th I'm misremembering. I think there's a chance that Lance like doubles him. We see that. I don't think Lance doubles. Look, look. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Technically Shows correct. All right. Technically correct. Shows how much I know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. We rescued big, big Jagan boy out of here. All right. Let's build these support points. There's a limit to how much you get, but I don't think I'm even nearly like there. I'm only at turn eleven. No. All right. Let's see if we can piece together a good boss kill. You do get extra XP in this game for like killing bosses, right? Oh Jesus, he has 1% crit. <laughs> no! <laughs> Lance, please. Okay, we put him at exactly the right amount of fine. HP for where Marcus can kill him. Very cool. Very helpful. Very cool, yes. Okay, I guess I'll just... I mean, Volno Marcus is not even enough. He needs like more HP. How do you get hit, Marcus? What the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, we're not... Oh, out, we're not out healing him with this. We're not out damaging him. I guess just like park Alan here for some chip XP. Hopefully we don't get hit and just heal Marcus. I guess that's the play. I uh, think this is definitely we need to take the one off plants, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know if it's better to like use the one I already used or not, but those kind of minutia, I don't want to spend time worrying about them. Yeah. If only we had Walt here, he could have like done chip. That is uh, that is honestly his best piece of utility is chipping this boss. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> or not. Okay, but now, because of that, I mean, we could go for it with Marcus, but I don't want to miss and die, so... Or, like, get hit and die. Both of those are bad. Uh, why is there no fort here? If, it's, if this was really a throwback to the early maps, why is there no forts? Explain that, Atheist. Oh, that's true. Well, they also didn't give you risks, too. Mm -hmm. Ellen, Ellen's late. That's true. Where is she? <laughs> got hit again. <laughs> it's a good thing we didn't go for it, huh? I know, right? Okay. Is this enough for Manny Cotty? Is That's I what I wanted Manicotti the exact Cotti same thing. Is like, if it is, do I go for it? <laughs> is this enough? Uh, hold up. Oh my god, it's not enough though. Ooh, ah. It's okay. It's technically enough if we dodge, but do we want to dodge tank this? Very tempting. Like, what if this hits and I can kill with Lin? I think the the, the lances will. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Oh, Lance technically has better odds, yeah, because he has two chances to hit. Every time, dude. This guy hits me every time. Okay, Lan Alan, snowball time. Come on. There we go. Oh, all Large right. Levels. Okay. Okay. There, well, there's there's the one of speed you wanted on. Yeah, that's FE6. There we go. Yeah. It's on Alan instead. All right. If you had right. one shot, <laughs> yeah, one shot at a seventy-nine. What's seventy-nine go to? Uh, eighty-nine, eighty, ninety, maybe ninety-two point. I want to say no, ninety-one point four. I want to say. I mean, and then we have yes, to get hit in return. We take another shot if he misses us. Like, come on, come on. What are what are actually? There we are. Okay, there we are. We got it. So strong. Okay, Lin. So strong. It's time to get speed. Just get speed. Just be good. Just get speed. <laughs> it's so bad. Mage killer Lin. She's earned two points of red so far. <laughs> Being this bad should not be legal. Okay, well. <laughs> well, there's your answer. <laughs> we know now. Rip. There you go. Oh, hey, it's Lin's daughter. <laughs> Father Lumina. Oh, wait, what? Whoa. <laughs> That's not Lin's daughter. That's Roy's dad. <laughs> okay, well, we have some work to do on Lin. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, she's got a wall to do. <laughs> Look, we have like maybe one chapter of Axe Land left. We gotta get it there. <laughs> we gotta get some speed there. Yeah, chapter three is Oops All Lances. If, so. if not, we're basically just using fear. <laughs> but worse. <laughs> Monikati fear. 
Okay, well, uh, hope you enjoyed the experiment. Uh, watch me live on Wednesdays and Saturdays if you want to, or subscribe or like, all that stuff. Uh, check out Raisins. He streams on Twitch every day-ish? I've been usually doing every other day. Every other day. That's still a lot. All right. Links in the description. Go check it out. And uh, stay around. See you guys around. Peace around. Sure. Bye. I'll see you around. Bye.